Hello, welcome to the video. It's day two of the adventure. I don't know what else to call it because I'm literally just going for a walk here and it could last days, could even potentially last weeks. I don't really know, I'm just gonna keep walking. I left the Longford town area this morning, which is in the very middle of Ireland, and I'm headed in a kind of a westerly direction. Not exactly west, but kind of west. And I've got everything in my bag here to survive, basically. Like my tent, cooking gear, my clothes, food and water, and I'll pick that up as I go. And I'm gonna wild camp as much as I can. The odd time, I guess I'll stay in a B&B &B when the budget allows. And we'll just see what happens. Honestly, the camera doesn't do this justice. It's so small. It's a church. So small. I love seeing this kind of thing on the trip, just in the middle of nowhere. These are the sort of things you just pass in a car, for example, and you wouldn't bat an eyelid. But when you're actually walking past them, they can seem, I suppose you just take time to notice how interesting these things are. And that's what I love about traveling on foot too. It's like a slow burn, you know what I mean? You're not focused on getting somewhere all the time because you know that if you were to do that, you'd drive yourself mental. It takes all day to reach anywhere on foot. <laughs> it's a whole meat wrap with hummus, avocado, and then this fake pepperoni by corn. I'm raging. I left the cheese in the fridge back home. I forgot the goddamn cheese. This is like a church grounds here. Now back in the day when locals would go on a pilgrimage, as they did back in the day on the Camino de Santiago too, locals would walk from one town to the next without money, without food, without water and they'd rely solely on the hospitality of the people in the next town or village. And those people, when pilgrims arrived, they felt obliged and as though it was part of their duty to take them into their homes and to look after them, give them a bed for the night. And I think this is probably the only remnant of that left really, the churches around Ireland, because you know these places, they can feel like sanctuaries An old deer just stopped her car there beside me on this back road and asked me if I was okay, if I needed help, if I needed her to take me somewhere. And I said, no, I'm just checking something on my camera here. I'm fine, but thanks for stopping and asking. And she said, oh, I thought you were lost. And I said, well, I was hoping to get lost today at some point. <laughs> but that is something that happens a lot here in Ireland, I know. People, let's say in America, don't think it happens much there, for example. It's great to experience because it does alter your perception of the world. World, It does help you see that, you know what, the world isn't as dangerous as we think it is and it's filled mostly with good people who are willing to help. You wouldn't even know that house was there. See it? can't even see it at all from here. It's, it's really like any time you see that, it just really does show you the power of nature. And the amount of work that can be done when you're patient, I suppose, is what nature is always trying to teach us. This is the town of Drummond. 
not sure what else it's known for other than this is home to one of the best boxty in Ireland. Boxty is like a potato pancake that we eat for breakfast here in Ireland. I love it. Don't think I'm gonna get any today because I've filled already in my bag. That was Drummond. I'm just coming up to the entrance to Derry Cairn Forest. I have been here before. I absolutely love this forest. It's a beautiful setting right next to the lake. As I walk along the road here that leads up to the entrance, there's lots of spots on either side that I could potentially wild camp if I wanted to. And nobody's gonna be along here, right? But I do wanna camp in there because it's much nicer. You're beside the lake. And I think that once things quieten down a bit later on, it'll be just me and my tent in the bush in the forest. So we'll just try and slink off the trail when no one's looking a little bit later and find a quiet spot to pitch the tent. So there's a couple of vehicles parked down here which means there are at least a few people in here going for a walk at the moment. Well it doesn't seem there's that many people so it shouldn't be too hard to find a quiet spot and to be able to nip in there without anyone seeing me. I have a picnic table. What I might do is look for somewhere to put the tent and then come back and cook dinner. Or I might just cook dinner now and then do the tent. There's actually quite a few people walking through, even uh, still early, coming up to half seven. And there's not many places to pitch here. It's very uneven behind me in the trees. It's very flat where I am right now, but it's out in the open and it's a common area where people go. Okay, just gonna slip off into the woods here and see what we can find. was just one lady out walking her dog that did see me putting the tent up here but she didn't look like as if she even registered what I was doing I think she, it looks like she's walking with something on her mind and as though I'm the last thing she cares about like this is the walkway here that's quite busy I don't think there'll be that many more people coming in and that's my tent through the gap there so you definitely see it if you were looking but uh, I don't think many more people are going to come in here tonight. And even if they do, will they see the tent? I don't know. Even if they see the tent, what are you going to do? 